Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jay once again. Welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys my first impressions of Ubuntu 1904, which I will be reviewing in full after it's released. But until today, I've actually, I've never used Ubuntu 1904. So I was gonna call this a Ubuntu 1904 preview, but this is the first time I've ever looked at it. So this is a first impressions video. So in front of me right here is a System76 Darter Pro that System76 was nice enough to lend me for a full review, which will be on my channel here very soon. But I wanted to, install Ubuntu 1904 on something awesome, and this laptop is definitely awesome, so stay tuned for that review. So let's go ahead and dive into Ubuntu 1904. So here on my laptop, I have Ubuntu 1904 running off of a flash drive. Again, this is the beta. It's not out yet as of the time I'm recording this, but it's coming soon. And I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this because I will have a full review of the final product, but my first impression of it so far, at least in terms of the experience or the appearance, is that this is a very professional look for a GNOME distribution. One of the problems with GNOME, in my opinion, is that the theme has never really been that great. Sometimes it's good, but you know, GNOME is a great desktop environment, I love it but the theme has never been something that a GNOME fan will brag about. And here we have a custom theme. And I think that's pretty much required nowadays until GNOME gets their theme sorted out. They did actually refresh the theme, but it doesn't really look all that different. The Ubuntu icon theme that they've implemented here and also the overall theme, if I go ahead and open an application, is really good. It may not be my preferred color scheme, but it definitely does look professional. And you can see the icon theme here, the brand new icon theme, which I believe was released in the last version of Ubuntu, but has been further refined in 1904. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this real quick. So I'll just go ahead and open the installer. And I'm gonna speed through this a little bit because there, again, I'll have a full review coming. So I'll just go ahead and go through the process here of installing this on the laptop. Go ahead and erase the disk. So far, the installer doesn't really look all that different at all, other than, of course, the theme. Put in my information here. Continue, and here we go, we're installing. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and restart now. Okay, here we are at the desktop right after a fresh installation. The first thing it's asking me for is online accounts. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. We see this screen asking if we would like to help improve Ubuntu. I recommend that we do that because, you know, we wanna definitely help them because we're provided this distribution for free. But since this is just a demo, I'm just gonna say no in this case. And click next. So for privacy, we can configure location services, which defaults to on. And then we have a number of applications that we can install by clicking on them. So Spotify, VLC, Bitwarden, Chromium, and so on. Definitely some great applications to have. And we can, of course, open software to get a full application to manage our installed applications. So at this point, a couple things I wanna mention. The installation process was, you know, it wasn't any faster or slower than it, it's been in the past. It's pretty much exactly the same. Now, when I booted from the flash drive and started using this distribution in live mode, it felt way faster than any Ubuntu version I've ever used. It was extremely fast. Now, this laptop came with Pop! OS 1810 installed on it. And I spent considerable time on that. I've had uh, Manjaro installed on here. I tried several distributions on this laptop. And now that I've converted over to Ubuntu 1904, even though it's a beta, it already feels a lot faster. Now with the previous version of Ubuntu, 
They also bragged about how much faster it was than 1804. I didn't even notice a difference because I felt like 1804 is very fast. And even though a lot of people say it's slow and bloated, I've never felt that way. I've always thought GNOME is actually a very fast and responsive desktop environment. But even I notice a difference so far in 1904. And now that it's installed, I'm seeing that it's actually very responsive. And even the boot speed was faster than Pop! OS 1810 on this same machine. Now when Pop! OS 1904 comes out, I'm sure it'll benefit from the same speed increase. But so far, I have to say it's very responsive. I'm gonna go ahead and close out all of these and we'll take a quick look around. And of course I have some updates. This is beta, there's gonna be a bunch of updates. I'll just go ahead and install them, why not? And over here on the left, we see the progress bar for the updates, which is pretty cool. So if I open that back up, we can see that the updates are actually close to being done and they are done, there you go. So must not either there's, there weren't that many updates or they were small, but that happened pretty quickly there. So I'll open up some applications here. So LibreOffice was very fast opening up. That was not edited. I, that's actually the real speed. And the version we get is 6.2, so very recent. I believe that is the latest version of LibreOffice. Default browser is still Firefox. And we have version 66.0.2, which is the latest as of the time I'm recording this video. But of course, they come out with new versions very often. We have Rhythmbox for the default music player. And then on the panel, we have an Amazon link right here, which we can easily remove and probably should. Help menu. We also have files, the default file manager. And, you know, of course, I should mention the desktop icons right here. GNOME no longer ships with support of desktop icons. They didn't get enough developers to help them out, so they had to cut that feature, which uh, actually was expected anyway, but it doesn't matter because there's an extension available that gives you that same functionality. So for those of you that need that, you can still do that. And Ubuntu has that included by default, which is great. And then looking around the default applications, I haven't installed anything yet. These are all the applications you get with a default installation so far. So we have a settings screen here for live patch. I already mentioned LibreOffice. We have some games by default. Interestingly enough, we have a remote desktop client. Remina is a great way to connect to multiple remote sessions if you need to do any kind of support. We have Solitaire, Mahjong, Thunderbird as the default email client. Of course, we have the system monitor. That's part of GNOME. I'll go ahead and open that up right now. Close out of some of these right here. So we can get a look at the resource usage or general resource usage with nothing running. So we can see here that it's using about 1.6 gigabytes of RAM, which is actually more than I would expect. So it might be something I'll need to look into because generally speaking, GNOME doesn't use that much memory when it's mostly just idle. Then we have the eight cores. There's actually only four. There's eight logical cores because there is hyper-threading with this CPU. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video because the final release is coming very soon and that's when I'm gonna go into more detail about Ubuntu 19.04. But my first impressions of this distribution is that it's very fast, like I mentioned, very responsive. I mean, I most likely won't use 19.04 as my daily driver because I prefer LTS and I don't wanna lose out on all the support because non-LTS distributions of Ubuntu are only supported for nine months. And unless there's a majorly awesome new feature I can't live without, there's usually no reason to use anything but LTS. However, the speed increase here and the extra responsiveness does kind of make me jealous and maybe I'll even consider that, who knows? But so far, so good. It looks like Ubuntu 19.04 is shaping up to be a really awesome release. And that's leading up to the next LTS release 2004, which will be released next year. So all the improvements we see here, we'll get in the next L LTS release. So definitely some important work being done here. So have you guys had a chance to check out Ubuntu 1904? Let me know in the comments what you guys think of Ubuntu 1904. I look forward to reading your comments and I'll have new videos soon, so stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. 
If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.